it finally happened. I have finally put 285s, 33 inch tires on my fourth generation 4Runner. Yo, Adrian! I did it! For those of you that don't know, I have been wanting to put larger tires on my 4Runner for the longest time now, and I finally got around to doing it. Now, the tires that I put on my 4Runner are Falcon Wild Peaks. The exact size is 285-70R17, aka 33 inch tires. Now, if you're in the 4Runner community, you know that so, so many people ask about what they need to do to fit these 285s on their vehicle. And because this is an extremely common question within the community, I wanted to make this video to tell you everything I learned and everything you need to know to fit these bad boys on your 4Runner. So in this video, I'm going to talk about what exactly you need to do to make these tires fit on your vehicle. And the short answer is, well, it's complicated. It kind of depends on all the different factors that go into your wheel and tire setup. So let's talk about it. Now I had three specific goals that went along with fitting these 33 inch tires. The first was no rub. I definitely did not want any rub. Some people can deal with a little bit of rub, but that was something I wanted to eliminate completely so I didn't have to worry about it at all. The second goal was I did not want to have to do a body mount shop. Now for those of you who don't know what that is, it involves cutting the body mounts in order to clear the tires and that way they don't hit the body itself. Didn't want to fool with that either. And the last perimeter was I did not want to have to buy new upper control arms just because I'm not really going to be doing all that much off-roading and they can tend to get pricey especially if you want ones that are adjustable. And the last thing that I wanted to avoid while lifting this vehicle was I didn't want to have to deal with a body lift. I wanted to only lift the suspension. Nothing against a body lift per se. I just didn't want to deal with it. Just wanted to keep it purely to the suspension. Now what do I mean when I say that fitting these tires on your vehicle can be complicated? Well, basically there are three main factors that go into fitting tires on your vehicle and the combination of these factors pretty much makes the fitment a little bit different for each vehicle. Now, what are those factors? Well, first you have the height of the lift you put on your vehicle. This is probably the main factor for fitment. Next, you have to take into account the wheel offset of your rim. Now, this is basically the depth of how far your rim goes back into the wheel itself. And lastly, it slightly depends on the brand of tire that you buy. So let's talk about what I did on my 4Runner starting with the suspension lift. Now like I said earlier, this is pretty much a necessity if you're going to fit tires this size. Now I'm not going to go too into depth about the different types of suspension lifts. I'll save that for another video if you guys want to discuss it. But what I ended up putting on my vehicle was the Daystar Spacer Lift Kit. This gives me 2.5 inches in the front and 1.5 inches in the rear. Now here are my thoughts on that. So yes, a spacer lift is obviously a budget option for lifting your vehicle. I chose to do this instead of getting new shocks and springs solely for the reason that I do not do very much off-roading. If you are a person that goes out on the trails and on the rocks every weekend, of course you're going to need springs and shocks and the whole works down there, but that really wasn't my vehicle. Now what I found out from research and talking to people in the community is that the 2.5 in the front and 1.5 in the rear is kind of a sweet spot lift-wise. The reason being is that if you do any lower of a lift than this, you're going to run into some fitment issues and you're probably going to have to do a body mount chop and a viper cut in the front. Now, if you do any higher than the 2.5, 1.5, you're most likely going to need those aftermarket upper control arms in order for your vehicle to be aligned correctly in the spec. So given this information, along with its more affordable price point, I did go with the spacer lift. Now, the second factor I had to consider was wheel offset and back spacing. Now, here's what I ended up doing. I have these stock rims on my vehicle, and they come stock rims from the factory. They have a 30 millimeter offset which puts the wheel itself pretty narrow on the wheelbase. They don't stick out too far, and that can cause body mount rubbing issues. Now, it's pretty common in the community that a zero millimeter offset aftermarket wheel will help you out in terms of clearing. I did not have a zero millimeter offset wheel, and so what I did was I opted for the 1.25 inch Spidertrax wheel spacers just to help with the inside clearance of the wheel itself. Now when I put these on, people had some concerns as far as the wheel bearings go, just because the kind of common misconception is that, oh, if you put on wheel spacers, it's going to mess up your wheel bearings. And while that may be true for people that have very large wheel spacers or people that run spacers along with extremely negative offset wheels, that wasn't the case here, simply because with the 30 millimeter offset, Paired with the wheel spacers, the back spacing was about the same as someone who's running a zero millimeter offset wheel, which is extremely common and safe. Now, I know that's kind of a lot to grasp, but let's go ahead and move on to the last factor. Now, this is an extremely small factor, 
And it's just basically that within the realm of a certain size of tire, say 285-70R17, different brands might have an ever so slightly different tire size. Say for instance, you have a Falcon 285 compared to maybe a Nitto 285 or even a Toyo 285. Now while they all are 285s in theory, there could just be an ever so slight tiny tiny difference in the tire size itself. Now taking all of this into account, I first lifted my vehicle, I then added the wheel spacers, and finally I put on the 33 inch tires. Now as soon as I got them on, I did notice some slight rubbing, and this is where a tiny bit of cutting came into play. Now first, I had to do something about the mud flaps. So on the 4Runner, it's best to completely remove the front mud flaps, trim the rear mud flaps, and then leave the rear mud flaps on while trimmed. Now this is just to better protect the wheel well and keep everything in place while giving you extra clearance. Now even after this I was still having some rubbing in the front on the back side of the bumper and so what I did to fix this was I did a tiny 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 bumper cut on the bottom side. You can honestly barely notice it. Some might call it a baby viper cut or whatever but this was necessary to eliminate the rub mainly while turning sharply, but also in reverse and turning, that is where it rubbed on this part of the vehicle. And look at that, like I said, you can honestly barely tell. And just like that, no more rub. After that, I was able to take it to the shop where I got an alignment and balanced my wheels. And just like that, the journey of fitting these tires comes to a close. And I gotta admit, I absolutely love how it turned out. That about wraps up today's video. As always, if you want upgrades for your Toyota, check out trailrunnercustoms.com, link in description. And subscribe to follow along as I make cool upgrades and videos for tons of different vehicles. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.